what is what is the problem that that Candy deals with, Tom? Why why does the why does the business world need you? Uh, because uh, marketing's rubbish. I mean, not marketing itself, but the ability for us to measure the connection between the stuff we try and communicate to people and the results we get back. And a prime example of this is the the stat which uh, based on most stuff you read on the internet particularly people like e-consultancy websites convert at best around two percent of visitors one in 50 into inquiries not that's, into a sale into an inquiry inquiries. that's really really good I mean, maybe a sale if it's an e-commerce mm. website but the closest kind of analogy to that for a, for a non-e-commerce website mm. would be an inquiry mm. you know, one in 50 so every ninety-eight, you know, every pound you spend on marketing, ninety-eight mm. pence is largely wasted. And is, is that results. is that because of what <clears throat> what the the website um, encourages people to do when they get there? Well, part of the problem is we don't know. So there's no uh, there's no particularly easy way to track the narrative, the complete journey of someone you're interacting with. Because the reality is you don't just interact with them on the web. Yeah, you probably these people can probably come across for you in newspapers and magazines. They might search for you on the web. You might communicate with them by email, by telephone, by meeting them at events. And nothing pulls that story together. Nothing gives you a consistency of picture across all those things. And you, once you've met them and you know who they are, you might have a CRM system. You mm. might you know, put their name in and you might diligently update it every time you meet them. Oh, I emailed them this and they came to this seminar, I emailed that. But actually, there's a whole step that happens before that when they might visit you on the website. They might go to Google and type in you know, digital cameras or tulips or training services or umbrellas and find your website through an advert or through just through you appearing in the rankings. And they go and have a look around and they browse the website and they look at, you know, what products you do and what services you do and who you are, and read your blog, mm. download your white papers and watch your videos, and all this stuff. And you've got no idea who these mm. people are. Mm. They are completely anonymous. And this is indicative of the modern way of shopping now, that we check people out or companies out online now. It is what we, we, kind of we know them yeah. before we, you've ever met the, the, we, the prospect. We, we call it the new funnel. So the mm. old way of selling, you know, we, this classic kind of funnel model, you'd start with this big hopper at the top of, of prospects, suspects, people you had a name and address. Let's focus on the B2B side because mm. it's easier. You start with a name, you know, job title, a company name, and you pick up the phone, you sit there with your book, and you ring them up. Yeah, and you know, no, no, maybe come and meet me, brilliant. Mm. And you, you literally hammer that list. This is playing the numbers game. You basically. hammer them into submission. Yes. And you know, progressively down each stage, they drop down, you'd hope you'd stick a thousand in the top, and ten might come out the yes. bottom. It doesn't work anymore. It's almost, I mean, it's still a legitimate approach, mm. but by and large, you're much more successful for letting, helping people to find you. Mm. Why, why doesn't it work so well? Because we used to live in little towns and villages where there was a solicitor and a banker and a, there might be one factory making this widget, another factory making that widget. And you all play golf together and you're on the Rotary Club or the Chamber of Commerce. and. Yeah, you know, there was there were a limited number of suppliers for that thing, mm. and you used to judge the people based on the relationships because you probably knew them. And actually, if I want a solicitor now, I don't automatically go to you know the solicitor that my dad used to play golf with. Mm. I've got a whole you know probably a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred thousand solicitors in mm. Manchester alone. How do I choose which one that I want to use? Mm. And the reality is, and this is the reality for everything. You know, not every sector has accepted it yet, and it, and the percentage varies. But you know, the car industry, for example, if you're going to buy a new car, the first thing you do, the first thing ninety something percent of us do, is Google search. Mm. We search, we look around, and we find who's offering which other car we want. How much does it cost? What reviews does it get? Mm. Who's near me? Who sells it? And before the person we might ultimately buy it from knows anything about us, we know all about them. Mm. We've read everything they've ever written. We've checked out what other people have said about them. And so there's this huge section of the buying process. And, and, and in most industries, you know, the car industry is actually starting to accept that that's the way things are done. Lots of industries aren't. Lots of people still believe in the old, you know, I will get the referral from the bloke I pay golf with, which is still true to an extent, mm. but it's not a particularly scalable or sustainable mm. model. Mm. There's this huge section of the buying process where you are not involved. 
the best thing you can do without intelligence is make sure there's lots of stuff out there yes. that people might find you for, might trust you for, mm. thought leadership material. And this has been the way marketing and sales have been mm. going. So this is about the, the content, because we're all told that content is everything these days content with online marketing. marketing. Yeah, the big buzzword in marketing for about from, from kind of, you know, 2006 onwards mm. was content-driven marketing. The idea that you create the content that pulls people and you always mm. create a gravitational pull that attracts people mm. to you mm. and the closer they get to you the more they're convinced and compelled by the mm. stuff you've mm. created can, can i just pick up on that what what holds companies back from doing that what what's the barrier do you think because not everybody's doing it very well or at all there's lots of things one is people companies don't understand what they're i don't like the word usp necessarily they don't understand uh, what their proposition is. They mm. don't understand what they could offer the market. Mm. But a really good example, um, I did some work a few years ago with a company that did, did commercial furniture, did furniture for offices like this. And um, they were dealing with, they were wasting loads of time with their sales guys advising people they knew would probably buy and probably spend sensible money with them at some point, but not for about five years. Mm. These people were kind of admin assistants who wanted to know whether a certain desk would fit in a certain place. And you know, really simple inquiries that their experts who'd built up 20 years of experience were answering on the phone. People they wanted to keep sweet. And, they, 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 and then they, they're doing all this. I'm in their office listening to them. They said, well, what can we offer? What can we give to people? That, that What do we have that will, will pull people in and get people in? So I said, I've just listened to your guys answering yet a thousand frequently asked questions from people trying to plan out offices. Put that knowledge out online mm. and, and you will attract a vast amount of traffic and interest mm. and actually credibility as well. Because you're seen as an authority. You are the experts in doing it. Yeah. The problem with that, and I was really involved in these sorts of campaigns, I created content for, for IBM and for Orange and for lots of big tech mm. companies. And the problem with all this stuff was the lack of intelligence that comes back. Because you've always got this dichotomy. I want to share my knowledge. Mm. I want, I'm happy to give away 1% of my value to make people know that I'm the authority, that they want to come and talk to me. But it gets to a point that you share loads of this stuff and you go, I'm sharing it all, but what's coming back? Mm. And if what's coming back is just those 2% and frankly, usually a lot less than that coming to your website making an inquiry, mm. it becomes very hard to justify. Mm. If because that 2% is the best case scenario. So professional services firms, we're seeing typically no more like 0.1%. Mm. So one person in every thousand visitors makes an inquiry, let alone becomes a customer. And yet professional services firms are creating loads of content. Mm. Lawyers put loads of stuff out there. Mm. And so it becomes, how do I get some, in it's not about content-driven marketing, it's about putting intelligence to that content-driven marketing. How do I understand how I'm engaging with these people? Mm. Who, yeah, how do I get return on investment from all this stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm creating these white papers, blogs, videos, I'm pouring out blog posts and, and investing huge amounts of money and driving people to my site to read this stuff. How do I convert them into customers? So we were talking about um, intelligent driven mm -hmm. marketing rather than necessarily piling loads of content out there, which can be very time consuming and you start to think, well, I'm giving away the crown jewels here, what's coming back? What's the alternative? So you do need to put the content out there, but you need to see what's coming back, and more specifically, who is coming back. Mm -hmm. And and it it wasn't a problem we identified at first, but but it was it, we came to understand what was what the problem was that we could solve, mm. which was that most of the people you interact with online are anonymous. They are not um, known people. It's not like the old funnel where you've got this suspects list. You don't start with a name and a company name and a job title and all this knowledge about people. You start with these anonymous people and coming in consuming all your content. And from that point, it's really hard to turn those people into prospects. Mm. You might see someone come in, read all your white papers, uh, you know, download everything you've got, look at all your product pages, and you're there going, these look like hot prospects. These look like these look like people who are going to buy from me, mm. and there's nothing I can do to intervene in their buying process mm. because I, it's it's my my prying eyes are completely shielded. Because these people are, are anonymous. Because they're anonymous. They're, they're using your content, but you don't know what for, and you don't know who they are. It's the nature of the web, mm. and actually, you know, one of the things that we have to do, and, and this ties in very neatly with the with the change in law around cookies recently, actually, is renegotiate that deal between mm. website owner and content creator. 
the, the, the fact that we've all done so, we've used to the web being free, means that we've almost all been suckered into this idea that we have to give all this stuff away for free. Mm. Because the alternative is to put it behind a form and watch dramatically fewer people read yes. it. Yeah, it, you know, it won't, it doesn't necessarily get indexed by the search engines. When you say behind a form, do you mean you have to fill something yeah, in to get it? Absolutely. Right. Which, which is fine for a proportion of stuff. Mm. But actually, most of what you want to do is you want the maximum number of people coming and reading it and downloading mm. it. You just want to be able to see who's doing yes. it. Yeah, and the, the, the comparison is a shop, a high street bricks and mortar shop. Imagine in there you're doing uh, free samples and yeah, you're giving away you know, little bits of cake or sweeties or doing test drives of cars or whatever it may be. And you're doing it blindfolded. You turn the CCTV off, you shut your eyes and you just literally like, you, know, you just pretend people aren't there handing stuff out. Mm. You'd never do it. No. You'd never, you'd never just completely ignore the customer when they walked in the door. Mm. If somebody came into your office and started you know, picking up the brochures and, and walking out with stuff, you wouldn't let them do it without asking their name. Mm. But we do online, we put this stuff out there mm. and we, we seem to have accepted this terribly negotiated deal that people can just come and take it and go away again. Yes. And actually what we're saying is, no, that's probably not right. We put an awful lot of effort into this content. There's a lot of value in this content. Mm. We're not saying you can't have it free. We're not saying we're going to spam you for life just for taking it. Mm. But it would be nice if we could see a little bit more about you before you walk, waltz away with it. Yes. Especially if you're just going to come and you know, delve through all our knowledge mm. and walk away. Mm. We're going to want to do something about it. So you've developed a system mm. for doing this. So would you describe how that works? So our software is sits behind your website. It's, it's, it's a tiny amount of code, six lines of code, copied and pasted into any website. And from those six lines of code, we can track every individual who comes to a website. And we start with, with a certain amount of information. As soon as somebody lands on your site, we learn certain things. We learn where they came from, we learn where they are geographically, uh, we learn what they searched for, if they found you through search, um, and we learn what they're looking at. You know, we see every page they look at, everything they download, everything they do on your website. So already we're starting to build up a behavioral profile. Based on their IP address, we might also find out who they work for. And so the bigger company is, the more likely it is it owns its IP address and we can start to cross-reference. So we might see 10 people from Barclays came to this website and did these things. Mm. Then what we do is we start to append identity to this. So if they click through from an email that you've tweaked from us, or if they fill out a form at any point, register for a newsletter, we pull in identity. And there's loads of sources of identity on the web. So we'll go and extract what we can from LinkedIn and from Facebook and flesh out this profile. So you've got this group of individuals who are browsing your website. You can start to see them and tailor. And that's pretty cool in itself. I've got a little report on this person came and did all these. Andrew came and read these white papers and these blog posts. And if I know it's Andrew, I can pick up the phone to him. Then you can start to segment people. Mm, show me everybody who's got a lead score of 60% who downloaded something and looked at this product page in the last week. What do I do about that? Well, I could email all those people a special offer for that product. I could run a telemarketing campaign against all these people who almost completed an inquiry form but didn't quite get there for some reason. Or, and the most recent bit that we've created is, in real time, somebody fits this profile on the website, show them this, ask them this, do this. Somebody comes to my website and I know they're on my hot prospects list. I recognize the company they're from and I'm desperate to talk to that company, but I don't know who they are. You, Mr. Hot Prospect, come to my seminar, fill in your email address here to book. Got you, I know who you are, I'd love to talk to you. Win an iPad, give me some contact information. You start to engage with people, personalize your site, mm. almost one-to-one -one even. Mm. Andrew Thorpe comes on my site, hello Andrew, I'd really like to talk to you. Mm. Here's some stuff that I think you might be interested in. We were talking before about the importance of having quality conversations with a fewer people as opposed to just spamming a lot of people. Yeah. Is, is this the way that you're recommending people go now? I, I think there's lots of different ways you can qualify a, a prospect. And you know, what we found is from the people who are on your website, so if you were just measuring the success of your website by volume, 
you're measuring even more the wrong thing than I thought you were before I saw all this data from our clients. The proportion of people on your website who are recruitment consultants. If you're in the IT industry, you would not believe the proportion of people on your website who are recruitment consultants, either trying to steal your people or sell you people. And so if you're just measuring volumes, you're measuring completely the wrong thing. We've got one client who only sells to 25 companies in the whole of the UK. Mm. They have only 25 clients. They can ignore everybody else who comes to the website. They might filter out journalists and keep a close eye on them. They might filter out industry analysts and keep a close eye on them. They might make sure that any of their customers, particularly the senior people from their customers who come on the website, get a particularly nice experience. But mostly what they're interested in is anybody from these 25 companies. And now their marketing department only gets measured on increasing the lead score of people from these 25 companies every month. That is their primary benchmark of marketing success. Mm. Have we cre increased online engagement with these 25 companies in the last month? Mm. There is so much noise on the internet. The nature of the fact that it's public, it's out there, anyone can access it. Mm. You will get a lot of students come and reading your stuff. Mm. You will get a lot of uh, competitors. Watching how many competitors come to be and check out people's websites is hilarious as well. Filter all those people out. Filter out the noise. Focus on these guys. Mm. Focus on the hot prospects. And even more than that, there's a group of people who will convert anyway. They've completed a form, they've inquired, done and dusted, great. They're in your old school process now. Somebody will pick up phone and someone will come with them. There's people who come to your website and disappear again. They're flat, cold, didn't work, something didn't gap them. There's this group of people in the middle. They're warm, but they're not quite warm enough to complete that form. They're the really sexy ones. I mean, they're the interesting ones. They're where you get your 2% up to 3%, 4%, 5%. Because if you can intervene in their research process, in their buying process, and do whatever it takes to tip them over the edge, whether it's popping something personalised up online in front of them, knowing they've been there and putting a timely phone call in, presenting them with that special offer, which was just what they needed to make them go, mm. that's where the opportunity lies, focusing on those people.